Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Off the Shelf. Today, we're gonna to be introducing you to someone new. Perhaps you know these people in passing, perhaps you've never heard of them before, but hopefully this is the start of a love affair for you. It's February after all, love is in the air. But we're talking biographies and memoirs. I'm gonna start with someone who fascinates me, and that is Ernest Shackleton. This is his biography, Shackleton, By Endurance We Conquer, by Michael Smith. And Ernest Shackleton was an Antarctic explorer. He did several expeditions to Antarctica. Uh, the Endurance Expedition, I think, is probably the most well-known, and I think the reason for that is because the ship got broken up by ice, and he had to rescue, well, rescue, he had to, to save all of his crew in that expedition. Um, he was hardcore. I mean, take a look at this man. He was hardcore. But obviously, he's an entire person. He's not just an explorer. He also had a very chaotic private life. And this book gives you the complete picture. You get to see all of his background, private life, and then all of the expeditions to the Antarctic as well. And I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm fascinated by Ernest Shackleton and exploration on the whole. Like, I wanted to be Indiana Jones as a kid because I just wanted to, like, run around and explore all the cool things. And he fits right into that fantasy for me. So if you, like me, wanted to be Indiana Jones, but maybe in the Antarctic, then Ernest Shackleton is going to be up your alley. Check out this book. Next... The Fabulous Moolah, the first goddess of the squared circle. So the Fabulous Moolah was um, a female wrestler. She started her career, I believe, in the 1950s. And she was one of the longest working female wrestlers of all time. Um, she's most well known, I think, for her time working with the WWE, which if you know anything at all about professional wrestling is the biggest wrestling company. Um, and they came out with these books about several of their sort of legendary wrestlers in the late 90s and early 2000s. So they're written from the person's perspective um, and also sort of from a WWE perspective. So there's absolutely some bias there. And it, I, I would say that this sort of glorifies Moolah in a way that is probably not as even keeled as some other biographies would but again she's an she's an interesting character um because she was a character and she um here's a picture of her on the back she won the women's title in her i believe she was in her 60s they put the title on her again so this is her the last time she held the title she also trained a lot of other female wrestlers so if that's something that intrigues you or if you're a wrestling fan already I would definitely recommend this book just like I said be aware that it, where the bias is coming from this is not a, a balanced account of Moolah's life then Bruce Lee a life by Matthew Polly as I'm sure you know Bruce Lee was an actor and a martial artist. He died in the 1970s, right? Uh, he was 32 when he died. That I know for sure. But um, there have been a lot of kind of myths that have grown up around him and his life and his death. And Matthew Polly really tries to kind of brush all of that aside and give you a real look at who Bruce Lee was as a person, as an actor, as a martial artist, um, and, and what really he went through in his life, in his very short life. So if you are interested in Bruce Lee and you have not read this book, I absolutely recommend it. And if you're not interested in Bruce Lee, why not? He's I'm going to say fascinating over and over in this video. He's fascinating. This is fascinating. Um, so definitely come and check out this book. Highly recommend. 
Then I have the autobiography of Gucci Mane. And Gucci Mane is one that I am not as familiar with. Um, I've heard of him, obviously, but I think there's, there's a lot going on that I sort of missed out on. He is a rapper who started his career in East Atlanta. He's from Alabama. Um, but he was, for a long time, at least as well known for rapping as he was for all of his other extracurricular activities. Um, he was incarcerated a number of times for drug dealing, possession, weapons possession, um, assault. There was a murder charge that did not stick. Um, but this book was written after he was released from prison in 2016. And by all accounts, he came out of prison a changed man. Um, he had lost 100 pounds and really gotten his act together and was taking his music very, very seriously. So if you are interested in rap, um, specifically Atlanta rap, because I think that's its kind of own subgenre, uh, or if you're just, you know, interested in people, I think that this is a really good one for you to read. Because it's an autobiography, sort of like the Moolah book, I would say be aware that there is going to be bias. It's not going to be a super balanced account. This is him writing about his own life. So take that into consideration, but I definitely recommend this book. I think that, um, again, fascinating. Gucci Mane. I went down like an hour-long rabbit hole the other day to learn all about him after I picked this book. So... Let's learn about him together, shall we? Um, oh, so many choices. And I have Looking for Anne of Green Gables, the story of Ellen Montgomery and her literary classic by Irene Gamble. And um, Ellen Montgomery, like it suggests, she wrote the Anne of Green Gables books. And what's really interesting about this book is that it's almost a dual biography. You're learning about Ellen Montgomery, but you're also learning about her character, Anne, and where the inspiration for Anne came from, where all of the inspiration for the locations that she writes about came from. She herself grew up on Prince Edward Island, so there's a lot of like mining from her own life feeding into these stories. And um, I have loved Anne of Green Gables my whole life, pretty much. Um, we're not going to talk about Anne with an E. We're, we're not going to go there. But it's otherwise, OG Anne of Green Gables. Um, so if, if, like me, you are a big fan or you just really want to know more about a female author from the early 20th century, then I would absolutely recommend this book. It's got a bunch of fun pictures, too. I really like the fun pictures. Then we've got a behemoth for you here. If you've been living under a rock and you are unaware, the Ron Chernow biography of Alexander Hamilton was the book that uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda read that inspired him to write the musical Hamilton. And if you haven't seen that yet, I definitely recommend that you do. I think it's amazing, and I think it really brings American history and um, the beginnings of American politics to life in a way that nothing else does. But if you're looking for more or for a less dramatized musical version, I guess, um, this could be the book for you. It's not a let me dip in and, you know, read for a few hours and I'll learn what, I, what I'm interested in sort of book. It's a big one. It's a commitment. But I definitely think it's worth it. Um, like I said, if you're at all interested in Alexander Hamilton, who was the first Secretary of the Treasury for the United States, he fought in the Revolutionary War as um, George Washington's aide-de-camp. And he's, he's a fascinating dude. He's a super fascinating dude. And Ron Chernow does a very good job of telling us all about him, not just his political career and ambitions and his writings, but his personal life and all of the tragedy there. So, like I said, if you're interested in, in a non-musical version of Alexander Hamilton's life, then this book is definitely one to consider. 
then we have Cleopatra, a biography by Dwayne W. Roller. I'm going to hold it this way so you can see his name. And there are a bunch of biographies about Cleopatra. Um, the reason I chose this one is that this is the first biography about her written entirely from primary source documents. So primary source documents are things that were written at the time the subject lived. So all of the documents that the author used to write this book, to find the information for this book, were written during Cleopatra's time by her, by other people in her government, like that. So I'm intrigued, for one thing. I'm super intrigued by that because I didn't realize there were that many primary sources available for Cleopatra's time period. But, you know, I mean, it's not a super thick book, so maybe there aren't that many. But he took those primary sources and was able to put together a, a picture of Cleopatra's life like we haven't seen before. A lot of people are saying that this is the ultimate biography of her. So if you are a fan and you haven't read this book, I absolutely recommend it. Um, and like I said, it's a short one. So if you just can't, if you can't handle the Alexander Hamilton, maybe go for Cleopatra. <laughs> then I have, until Tuesday, A Wounded Warrior and the Golden Retriever Who Saved Him by Luis Carlos Montalban. Tuesday's the dog here. And um, Luis was a captain in the U.S. Army. He served two tours in Iraq and came back wounded both physically and mentally. He suffered from PTSD and alcoholism and had lingering uh, physical wounds and um, wound up meeting Tuesday who himself had suffered some trauma in his early life. And the two of them together became a team. And I had the great pleasure and fortune to meet Luis and Tuesday several years ago at a library event that I put together at a library I was working at at the time. And just wonderful, wonderful person, wonderful dog. I would say wonderful people, but he's a dog. Um, and... And I, I, I feel very fortunate to have had the opportunity to meet them and hear their story firsthand. Um, Luis has since passed, but this is a wonderful, I'm just going to say wonderful a bunch of times, heartwarming book about the difficulties that they faced before meeting each other and then how they learned to work together as a team. So... I, I absolutely, absolutely recommend this book um, to anyone, but especially if you are interested in service animals, in um, PTSD, in, in veterans, um, anything like that, you're, you're going to get a lot out of this book. But anybody who reads this book, I think, will get a lot out of it. I'm biased, though. Like I said, I've met them, and, and I'm very fortunate to have done so. Then I have this one, Madam President, The Extraordinary Journey of Ellen Johnson Sirleaf by Helene Cooper. And I had never heard of this woman before I pulled this book off the shelf this week. And I don't know why not, because she is awe-inspiring. Um, she was the first woman head of state on the entire continent of Africa. She was elected president of Liberia in, I believe it was 2005. And it's just, like I said, she's awe-inspiring. She's She won the Nobel Peace Prize. Um, obviously, becoming president, that was not her first jaunt into politics. She spent a lot of time really pushing for change in Liberia before becoming president and then made a lot of positive change in her two terms as president there as well. Uh, she came to office, I think, two years after the end of their civil war. So um, I think this is a book that you need to read. I think this is a book I need to read for sure. And I think, I, I don't even know what else to say. I'm. I'm in awe of this woman, and I, I think that we all should learn more about her, and I don't understand why I didn't know who she was before now, but 
Ellen Johnson's Relief, man. Read this book. And one more for you. Um, I saved my favorite for last. I couldn't help it. I had to include it because I love it so much. This is I Was a Dancer by Jacques D'Ambois. Jacques D'Ambois was a dancer with the New York City Ballet. Um, basically from its beginnings in the 1950s, he joined the company when he was 15. And he is sort of an unlikely dancer um, in a lot of ways. He was, you know, he grew up in, in, in Boston and in New York. He was a, a rough street kid who also, whose mother was pushing him into the arts and, and dancing because she had aristocratic leanings. And so she really wanted him to, to do ballet. Um, and he was busy, you know, hanging out on the streets of New York with other kids um, and, and causing trouble. And I, I guess this is my favorite. He's my favorite dancer of all time. He had an amazing career working with George Balanchine, who created more original works for him than any other dancer. So if you are at all interested in dance or um, mid-century performing arts, he was in Seven Brides for Seven Brothers as well. It's an MGM film from the 1950s. He played Ephraim, one of the Seven Brothers. And um, if you're at all interested in any of that, I highly recommend this book. He wrote it himself, so he's not a writer, he's, he's a dancer, but it's a very entertaining look at his life in dance. And that's all I gotta say about that. Um, so, hopefully you met somebody new today that you're interested in getting to know a little bit better. If not though, we have an entire section of biographies and memoirs for you to come and check out. The library is open for browsing um, during limited hours. Browsing hours are 11 to 2 every day. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the stacks open back up from 4 to 7. You can also get personalized recommendation requests on our website, eastmpl.org. Fill out a personalized recommendation request form. Give us a little bit of information about what you like and what you're looking for, and we'll give you some recommendations back that we hope you'll enjoy. We also have a new blog with a little bit longer form recommendations for you on different topics. There's one on Bridgerton and other things that you should read if you really enjoyed the TV show or the books or both. Uh, and I think that's all I got for you today. Oh. Make sure if you're not already reading along on our uh, 2021 EAPL Reading Challenge that you join us either on Beanstack or get, grab a paper reading challenge log checkoff thing um, here at the library and join us. Until next time, happy reading. <laughs>